Hello, in this video we're going to talk about arthrology, the study of joints. Okay, so arthrology, the scientific study of articulations. Um, anything arthro means joints or articulations. Um, that's just another fancy word for joints. An articulation where two or more bones, cartilages, or teeth make contact. Again, synonymous with joints. Um, I don't really care which term you use, but I will use either, and I tend to use articulation more than joint, I think. Um, and the reason we list teeth there is because teeth are not actually bones, they're their own structure. Um, but even so, where the teeth articulate with uh, the mandible and the maxilla are still articulations. Uh, the movement or the function of a joint depends on its structure. Um, so everything in anatomy and physiology is the same way. The function determines the structure and the structure determines the function. Um, so depending on the shape of the articulating bones, uh, the flexibility of the ligaments and the tension of the muscles and the tendons, that all those factors are going to determine uh, what type of movement is allowed at a joint. So anatomical joint classifications, of course, any anatomical classification is based on the structure of the thing that we're classifying. So what is that thing made of? Uh, how is it built? That sort of thing. So for anatomical joint classifications, we ask two questions. Is there a synovial cavity? Yes or no. And what type of connective tissue is holding the bones together? So based on those two questions, we get three anatomical classifications. So the first one is synovial joints. That's our first anatomical classification. So is there a synovial cavity, yes or no? Yes. Um, so all synovial joints have synovial cavities. If there is no synovial cavity, it is not a synovial joint. Uh, it's also held together by dense, irregular connective tissue and ligaments. So I don't know how in-depth you got into types of connective tissue in your anatomy class, um, but briefly, um, dense connective tissue refers to connective tissue that is densely packed with a lot of collagen. Uh, collagen is a very, very strong type of protein, um, very thick, kind of rope-like, I mentioned collagen when I talked about bone tissue in a previous video uh, about how it gives bones flexibility and durability. Um, so we have collagen in our tissues all throughout the body and it has the same effect. It's very strong and durable and flexible. Um, so whether dense connective tissue is regular or irregular refers to the arrangement of that collagen. So if it's regular connective tissue, uh, then it means that the collagen is all lined up together going in the same direction like a ligament or a tendon. Um, tendons and ligaments are made of dense regular connective tissue because the collagen is all lined up in the same direction. Um, that type of tissue is going to be very strong and resistant to forces in the direction that the fibers are all going. Uh, so like with a tendon, the fibers are all going in one direction. It's going to be very strong and resistive to forces in that direction, but a force that comes in from the side, like if there was uh, an impact to the Achilles tendon, for example, uh, it's not going to be resistive to that type of force. And that's why that particular mechanism can cause such an injury on a, a tendon. Uh, dense irregular connective tissue means that the collagen is going in all kinds of crazy directions, uh, like a bowl of spaghetti. Okay, so it's going in all different directions, which means that it's gonna be strong and resistive to forces in all different directions because it has fibers that are going in all different directions. Okay, so a synovial joint has a synovial cavity and it's held together by dense, irregular connective tissue. So connective tissue where the collagen is going in all kinds of crazy directions and ligaments which are dense regular connective tissue where the, the collagen is going all in the same direction. 
All synovial joints are diarthrotic. That means freely movable. Uh, so we'll get to our functional physiological classifications in just a minute. Um, but all synovial joints are diarthrotic. All diarthrotic joints are synovial. But that doesn't mean those two words mean the same thing. A synovial joint is the anatomical classification and a diarthrotic joint is the physiological classification. So both terms apply to the same joints, but the two terms don't mean the same thing. Uh, that's like saying all lions are quadrupeds and all lions are carnivores. So that may always be true. I mean, unless a lion had an accident only has three legs, you know, so it's almost always true. Um, but that doesn't mean quadruped and carnivore are synonymous. It doesn't mean they mean the same thing. They just always apply to the same animals. Um, so same idea here. All synovial joints are diarthrotic. All diarthrotic joints are synovial. But they, those two words have two distinctly separate meanings. Our second classification is a fibrous joint. So again, the first question, does it have a synovial cavity? Yes or no. Fibrous joints, the answer is no. If it has a synovial cavity, it is a synovial joint. Okay, so for our, our second and third classifications here, no synovial cavity. Then second question, what kind of tissue connects it? Uh, it's held together by, again, dense irregular connective tissue, just like the synovial joint. Um, so synovial and fibrous joints are both held together by dense irregular connective tissue, but the fibrous joint does not have a synovial cavity. It does not have a synovial membrane. Uh, fibrous joints are never diarthrotic. They are always either amphiarthrotic, so partly kind of movable, slightly movable, or synarthrotic, immovable. Cartilaginous joint, again, no synovial cavity. And this time, what tissue holds it together? Held by cartilage. That's why it's called a cartilaginous joint. Um, again, they are never diarthrotic. They are always either amphiarthrotic or synarthrotic. And we'll talk about all those in just a second here. Okay, so synovial cavity always has a synovial cavity, always is diarthrotic. Fibrous and cartilaginous joints never have synovial cavities and are always either amphiarthrotic or synarthrotic. And the difference between the two is which type of tissue hold it together. For fibrous, it's dense irregular connective tissue. For cartilage or cartilaginous, it's cartilage that holds it together. Okay, our physiological classifications I've already mentioned, uh, but that's based on how much movement a joint allows. So physiological classification based on its function. So what is the joint's function? How much movement is it permitting? Okay, so a diarthrosis or a diarthrotic joint is freely movable. Um, all diarthrotic joints are synovial, all synovial joints are diarthrotic. Um, amphiarthrosis or an amphiarthrotic joint, that's our slightly movable joint. I think of it as amphiarthrotic, think like an amphibian, so like some on land, some on sea, <laughs> like kind of in between. So it's not freely movable, but it's not totally immovable. It's kind of in between amphiarthrosis. Um, so slight, movable, slight amount of movement, it could be fibrous or cartilaginous. And then finally, synarthrosis or a synarthrotic joint means there's no movement, it's totally immovable. Uh, these are pretty rare in the body. Um, and we'll talk about all of our joints in another lecture. So we'll talk about more specifics here. Uh, but these also could be fibrous or cartilaginous. Um, so as we go through all the joints of the body, because we are going to cover most of them, there are a lot of little tiny joints that we're not necessarily going to get into. Uh, the joints between the bones and the face, for example, or every single little bone or every single little joint in the wrist and the feet. We're not going to get into everything. Uh, but we're going to talk about most of them. And uh, when we go through joint actions, like from lecture one, like, you know, plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, abduction, adduction, etc., those are all actions of diarthrotic synovial joints. So all of those movements are considered freely movable. 
Um, so even if a joint is restricted to only one plane of motion, like flexion and extension or something like that, um, it's still a diarthrotic freely movable joint. Um, so amphiarthrotic, it doesn't mean like it only has one pair of actions compared to three pairs of actions. It just means it doesn't do any of those actions. It barely moves. Um, so hopefully that will be made clear when we, when I record the, the lecture uh, segment about our individual joints. Okay, so that's all I have for this recording and I'll see you for the next one.